This tutorial is aimed at my youngest students who understandably don't have Photoshop yet. So I'll be going very slowly and clearly through every step. We will be using the free online Pixlr software that's very similar to Photoshop to make some graffiti like this. So remember kids, graffiti is bad unless someone pays you to do it on their property. Until then, there's Pixlr. The first step is to look at other people's artwork to see what sort of things they do to the text that they paint to make it look good. So we're looking at stuff in here like the thick black drop shadows on this text here and this text here. The use and colors they use in their gradients. So instead of just having a random rainbow of colors, it kind of goes to, you know, from this dark red to a lighter shade. Quite a lot of the time, there's like a black outlines going on or between two neighboring colors on the color wheel like this. But the most common features seem to be a black outline, a drop shadow, and some kind of gradient shade of color going on inside the text. These are things that we're going to try and emulate in our graffiti that we do here. So the next thing is to download the source images from tiny.cc forward slash CGI graffiti down there. So type that into a new tab. Make sure it's all lowercase. If the link didn't work, you just type the word graffiti wrong. You can change it. You should then see a folder like this and you're going to need to download each of these four things here. So to download them, the easiest way is to drag select them all, right click, download, or if you don't know how to unzip stuff, then just do this. If in doubt, double click on each one, one by one, and hit the download button at the top, and you'll see it pop up at the bottom of Google Chrome like this, and it's done. You can then click in the dark gray area next to the thing, and you'll go back to here and move on to the next thing and download each one. Click away, download, click away. And if he says you can't preview the file, that's fine. Hit download anyway. Once you've done that, you can go back to the tab that has your Pixlr on it. Or if you don't have this yet, go to pixlr.com forward slash E like this. I'll leave the most important shortcuts on the right hand side of my screen here. And the buttons I'm currently pressing are appearing down here as well, just above my head. Once you go to pixlr.com forward slash E, it should take you to the home page that might show you previous works that you've done before, or it might be blank because you haven't done any yet. That's fine. You now need to, on your computer, go to your downloads folder. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a yellow folder, which is just off screen here, but it should be a yellow folder. And once you click on that, it will take you somewhere on your computer. Click on your downloads folder on the left hand side over here like this. If you're on a Mac, click on the finder happy face at the bottom and click on the downloads folder on the left like this. You should then have four things that you've downloaded in here. We now need to get the bricks image into Pixlr first. So if you just make your window a little bit smaller like this so that you can see Pixlr behind it, if Pixlr is not open, let's just make sure you click on Pixlr so it's open. Make sure your window's here and very carefully click and hold and drag on the bricks and then let go over the Pixlr area. You'll see it will go dark for a minutes. Once it's dark, you can then release your mouse and it will come up with this. Hit create new and choose full HD. I'm not sure how good your computers are. So let's just do full HD. So your numbers will look like mine and hit apply. You've now got your brick wall like this. The next thing to do is to get your text installed onto this software. So get your text tool from the left, or you can actually hit the letter T on the keyboard and you can Click at the top that says add text. This is probably the easiest way to add text to an image so that it looks exactly like mine. Hit add text at the top. Then you're going to need to change a font to something interesting. It probably says something in Arial to start with like this. To change the font, simply click on the font at the top here and where it says Arial or whatever name it says by font, click on the green button for add local font. Then go to choose one of your graffiti fonts. You can choose both of them if you'd like, and then simply hit open and do the same on the other one and simply hit open. And you should see then see them added to the top of your list of fonts like this. Sometimes, because Pixel is free and it's online, it glitches a bit. And sometimes you see it listed as a thin line of text. If it looks like this, it will go invisible and it won't work. For me, it's worked. For you, it might not. If it didn't work, 
you can now just scroll through here and choose a different font if it came up with thin text like this it's a known glitch in pixlr and i don't know how to fix it because it's not my software but it's free so you just have to get over it but if you scroll down to where it says each eisen this seems to be an okay one any of these that you thought oh, game on is quite a good one for graffiti but yeah have a little look scroll through here see if you can find something that floats your boat and looks good for graffiti it needs to be really thick and bold so that we could fill it in with nice colors later on i'm going to choose my graffiti font some of these fonts when you download them type differently if it's in uppercase or lowercase if you've used this font which is the graffiti anything you type in with caps lock on comes out hollow like this anything you type with caps lock off comes out filled in so if i were you turn caps lock off it's easier to read and it's always in capitals anyway because that's how these fonts work so choose your font type in your text to type in your text simply move your mouse over to the text and double click on it or you can hit edit at the top over here and then type in whatever you want if you've got two words it will look good if the second word is underneath so click before the beginning of the second word hit enter then to change the size of your text where it says size click on the number and you might need to click twice but drag the slider up to about 300 you want to go quite big on this depending on how long your word is you can make this bigger or smaller it really doesn't matter now like mine it's kind of gone off the bottom of the screen i want to move this back to move this back click on your arrange tool on the left which is v on the keyboard or this paper airplane button and simply move this up like this i want the spacing between my words to be less so click on your text tool again and go to with this layer selected here that's got your text on it simply go to settings and you can adjust the line spacing and drag this to the left so i've set mine to about minus 25 ish like that and then you can hit close and if your letters seem to be too far apart you can of course drag that down to zero or type in zero if you want and then close that now we want to add color to this the most simple way of doing this is to go to select at the top so once you've moved your text of the arrange tool into the exact position that you want it to be in like this go to select and do select pixels so make sure you're in the arrange tool first make sure you're on your layer that's got your text on it and go to select pixels you should see a dotted line around the outside of your text now go to your gradient tool which is g on the keyboard for gradient or this button here and you can see it says the gradient only works on image layers we're on a text layer so let's create a new layer with the plus button just here and choose empty now let's change the color of our gradients by clicking on the whatever colors you see up here the colors here will be whatever colors you happen to have down here so maybe different for everyone click on this and to change the colors of your gradient you can obviously choose preset ones if you want to choose your own one choose the top left one and then click on this small little block with the arrow on it here and then click on this bigger block of color here and choose your first color i'm going to choose like a purple for part of it for the other color that looks really gray over here click on the smaller block click on the bigger block and then choose your second color like this a quick tip on the best colors to use for this if you go to a new tab and simply go to adobe color you got to spell it like an american and spell it wrong and then choose the top option it comes to the adobe color wheel like this the top option is analogous which is in other words neighboring colors in school you may have learned how to do complementary colors where you get colors that kind of match so obviously blues and yellows match but look really ugly in a gradient so you want to choose colors that are next door to each other so for example pinks reds and blues like this work well together um, and pretty much all of these colors work really well so you might want to go in here and just find a palette that works for you and get some inspiration from that but i'm going to go for something kind of like this you can fan it out a bit more if you want but don't go too far that's just uh, as a reference so you kind of know what colors to use i'm going to obviously put them in here you can get the hexadecimal code if you see a color you really like in here and you can actually select your text do Control c to copy it and in here you can do Control v and it will actually pick the exact color that adobe color gave you which is a really cool tip you can then hit ok and you've got your two colors and now you're ready click once very carefully outside of the gradient like this in this bar up there to use your gradient tool 
click at the top of your text and hold and drag So hold your mouse and you'll see a line appear like this and then let go of your mouse at the bottom like this if you would rather the text go a different way then you can drag it a different way like that and you can just keep doing it as many times as you like it's best to do vertical i find like this once you've got the gradient that you want you can then add a black outline to it to do that simply deselect by going to select deselect or control d and then your dotted lines will disappear it's now time to hide our text layer that we originally made so click on the middle tick box here for your original text with the t on it make sure you are now back on your top layer that has the colored text on it here make sure that one does have a tick i can't see this text very clearly from a distance it's really hard to read i'm alt scrolling to zoom out here um, so what i will do instead is add an outline go to filter outline and it usually looks good with a black outline although you can do any color most people do have the first outline to be black like this and hit OK. You can change the size of that. You can actually add double outlines. So if you want to add a big bubbly one like this later on, you can. But for now, keep the outline black and maybe increase the size of it to about 15 pixels until it looks something like this. Make sure the opacity is at 100 and then hit apply. Next, you can go to, we need to add a drop shadow. To do this, go to filter drop shadow and here's the settings you'll need to use put the opacity of the shadow to a hundred percent make sure the color's black as well so i've chosen pure black for the shadow or whatever color your outline is if your outline's a different color you can actually move your mouse outside once you clicked on the choose color and you can color pick like this and hit OK and it will color pick whatever you had. Put the blur to zero and now to see it and simply increase the offset X to the right and the offset Y to the right or to the left, whatever you think is cool, but I'll do mine to the right. Keep them to about roughly the same number each. I'm doing mine to about 30 ish between 30 and 40. And that looks quite nice. Hit apply. And now your text is a lot easier to see from a distance because of the contrast of the letters like this. So if you want to add another outline, you can. You can go to filter, outline, and this time it will throw another one on, which you can totally use if you want. I'm going to avoid it, but you can do this. We can make it any color you like and do what you think looks cool. But I'm going to hit cancel because I don't actually want that. At the moment, the text does look like it's just digital text photoshopped on top of a wall which it is to make it look like it's blended in properly i'll show you how to do this click on the three dots by your top layer and where it says blend mode simply choose either overlay although that kind of can make it look quite pale on bright backgrounds or you can change it to hard light which makes the darker areas a bit more visible but you can still through the see through the lighter areas I'm going to set mine to overlay because I think it looks quite nice. To add images or other layers to this, though, you're going to temporarily need to put this mode back to none because I want to add an image from the Internet behind this. So I'm going to set the blend mode back to none and close that down. You can now go on the Internet and find an image that you think will be useful. I'm going to search for Bill cipher and go to images this obviously works best on cartoon images if you just type in a photo of some celebrity or something rubbish then it'll just look like a photo and they'll look rubbish but if you choose um, something like this and go to tools color transparent this forces google images to show you only the good images that are fully transparent try and find an image that has thick black outlines as well to match your image it doesn't matter if it doesn't um we can uh, do what we want so i'm going to use i'm going to try this image here and do right click copy image go back to my pixelar tab and do edit paste or control v and your image will paste from the internet and it's already cut out because we asked it to be cut out if it's got black outlines on it already great if it doesn't you can do this so first of all resize it with your paper airplane arrange tool and click on the boxes around the edge to size that up once it's the size that you want you can go to filter outline and choose the color to be uh, whatever color you think it should be i'm choosing black and then hit apply you can now have either your image in front of your text like this or to move your layer just drag the layer and put it behind like that if your cartoon character is looking to the left or to the right it will be better to have your character looking into your text 
rather than looking away from it because it just means people's eyes will look at your image for longer and won't try and look away from it. So I'm going to have mine set up like this. If you have if issues moving it, just be careful. If you want to move the background image, you might just have to lock your layer, which is the go to your top layer, click on the three dots, hit locked. And that means you can click through and see your image without accidentally selecting the wrong layer, which might be useful. You can rotate the image as well, just to give it a bit more of an artsy style. I'm going to unlock my top layer again now like that. You know what? I'm going to have him on top. Great. So if you set the blending modes of these individually, to overlay, you'll have a problem where they sort of overlay over each other, which doesn't look as good. So now we need to do combine these two layers together. So click on your top layer, whether it's your text or your cartoon character, click on the three dots and click on the button that says merge down, which will just combine these layers together into one. Then when you click on the three dots and change the blend mode to either overlay or hard light, it looks a lot better. And if you zoom in now with Alt and scroll, you can see it really does look like it's been sort of spray painted onto the wall, which is good. The final steps to make this look really nice is simply to click on your background layer and we're going to add some shadows around the corners. On the background layer, go to filter vignette and increase the amount of the vignette until you're happy. Um, I think this looks quite cool like this. It also makes some of the bricks a bit darker, which means you can see your text clearer. And so that's quite nice. You can then hit apply. Once you're completely done with your image, you might just want to see if you want to add a bit of pop or sparkle to it. Back in your downloads folder, which is either the yellow folder or happy face at the bottom down here, you can go to the sparkle, duh, um, which quite a lot of graffiti seems to have, and just drag that in over your image. It will then ask you to create new or add current. You want to do add current. It will pop in like that. I want this to be really bright. Right. We could go to adjustment, invert, but it leaves a little black outline around the edge of it, which is really annoying. To get rid of the black outline, you could just instead go to adjustment, hue and saturation, and just increase the lightness all the way to 100 and then hit apply. And that will just give you a nice sort of sparkle. You can find other shapes of Google images and just put this wherever you think it should be. And if again, you want to merge it in with your other text, you're going to have to do this again, click on your three dots, change the blend mode to none, put the sparkle where you think it should be like that, and then three dots, merge down, and one more time, set the blend mode to overlay or whatever you think is best. And then you've done that. Once you're completely done, we might want to add a bit of that glitch effect that you guys seem to like so much. So to do the glitch effect, simply click on the three dots on any layer now and choose flatten image. The danger of doing this is that you're unable to edit it anymore, but we're done. So you can do flatten image and to give it that cool glitch effect, simply go to filter fringe. And if you increase the amount, if you did too much, it looks like you're, um, you've got problems. But uh, if you just do a very small amount, probably no more than about three, hit apply and then zoom in, you'll see the edges of your image have this sort of cool um, glitch effect to them. If you do it too much, it just looks really insane and people can't focus on it very well. If you want to add perspective to this image, which looks really awesome, you can simply go to your three dots and make sure you unlock this layer, get your arrange tool from the top left and then go to edit free distort and then when you click on the top corner you'll see you're actually able to distort the image like this what you're going to want to do is drag it up like this so my character is actually quite tall over here so what i'm going to do instead is drag this corner up a little bit like that you might need to zoom out with alt and scroll or just scroll and you can then just sort of distort the image a bit like this and if you want to do that over there you can and when you're happy you can hit apply at the top right like that and you're done that is how to create graffiti and blend it in with a photo using pixlr.com you can then do file save and save it as a jpeg um, with your name on it and you're done hope that helped thanks for watching